Hello everyone, and welcome back to Lawrence Place Space Exploration for what I'm hoping is going to be the final episode. At least the final episode before, well, I move on to doing something completely different for my next playthrough. <laughs> so I've been working through, as you can see, the um, FTL um, researches, and my god, they're taking a long time. Uh, you know, I, you may remember I said I was hoping to get this done in just under 400, 300 hours. Well, that's not quite happened. I've um, overshot a little bit there. Um, and so it got to the point where I was basically okay with the normal researches. I did, could most more or less keep up. Um, I've got these the five research plants down here, two here, and then the two up up here that we've been running away quite happily for the, the whole time, running off all of these um, yellow, red, blue, grey, purple, pink, and green science production facilities. That was okay. Then the final one, needs white as well space science and two million of those so that means I had to launch lots of rockets now rocket launches each one where uh, you launch you launch a rocket like this rumble 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 rocket goes up and then it spits out a load of space science out of the um, out, out of the uh, rocket assembly bit rocket silo and for each rocket launch you get a thousand space a thousand space science which means normally you'd require 2,000 rocket launches to get the 2 million space science you need. But because I've got those productivity modules everywhere, that brings it down to about 770. Now you'll notice I've actually done 870 something, which is obviously a slightly bigger number. There's another rocket going off. There's quite a good um, cadence going on here. Yes, that's the technical term for how frequently your rockets launch, I believe. So yeah, um, there, there was so it's been more like 870 in order to get very nearly there, maybe 880. And I think that's at least partly because there's been a few other researches I've done that have used the uh, space science, like what's this one, astrometrics. That took 140,000, for example. So that's 140 divided by 2.6. It's about somewhere in the region of 50 rocket launches for that one. And then there's been a few others as well, as I imagine I've done some. Of, let's see if I can find any. I think I did a few of the infinite researches. Um, I don't think they get shown down here, though. I think it's just up, yeah, up here. So these ones, these are on number seven. That one's on. That one's only on one. Um, this one's on number eight. So I've done, I've done a few of those, and that's used up a little bit more of these. And some of these are taking sort of a, f a few tens of thousands. So yeah, that 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 explains the um, the discrepancy and why there's been 880, and I still haven't, and I haven't quite finished it. So the re thing that's been keeping this rate down is the speed I've been able to produce this rocket fuel at. As you can see, everything else is the uh, they're all backed up fully, and there's as much of as much as I need of all of everything else. But it's just been it's been difficult, and it's been because there's been a lot of um, a lot of products that are being pumped along pipes, and with belts you can sort of tell how much is going down them, and it's easy to put in another belt parallel to it and feed them across the splitters. I just seem to struggle doing that with pipes for some reason. So there's been just a shortage of well, there's dimethyl hydrazine is, is um, in short supply at the moment, and no, not hydrazine ones. So it, it sort of it's varied a little bit. I've had I've had lots of problems with monochloramine, which is this one, yeah, and I have have that that problem at the moment. But it's mostly been traceable back to ammonia, and I've just not had enough ammonia either coming in or being pumped through. You see, all of these have got pumps on them, so they should be sucking the ammonia out of these tanks, until, so the tank should run dry. It shouldn't matter exactly how much is in them. And yet, somehow, the tanks have always been at about 50,000, no matter how many trains I have turning up, pumping more into them. So I built another facility down here for making more ammonia. That's going quite well. There's lots there, even though it's being theoretically pumped out as fast as possible. And then I built another two up here. <laughs> so there's crazy amounts of ammonia being made. And these are all just, just full. I'm, I, I don't I don't know. Maybe... It was only relatively late on that I started expanding all of this stuff, I have to admit. So perhaps if I'd, if I'd done this a bit earlier, maybe I could have come up with another more streamlined way. What I probably should have done is just made another copy of this entire rocket fuel genera and rocket generating system and put it somewhere else and just gone, yeah, I, I, I'm not going to go in and debug that and try and streamline it. I'm just going to make another one. Maybe that would have been better. Maybe it would have got my rocket launch a bit quicker and I could have beaten that 300, minute, 300 hours mark. There have been a few other things I've had to boost, like I ran out of um, the heat shield tiles, which is these ones. So I've I doubled the production of those through you know the old good old copy and paste and then tidy things up a little bit. Um, 
like tin production was a bit slow. There were a few, yeah, so there's been a few things where I've gone in and, and boosted things a little bit. But in general, it's a lot of it has been a bit grindy. It's just been here it is, set it working, leave it working, and just yeah, go away and come back later. Which isn't good Factorio play to be honest. I mean, Factorio is supposed to be one of those games where you shouldn't ever feel grindy. If things are going too slowly, you go out and you build another one, or another two, or another ten, until things are going at the speed you want. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. It just yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't have a good excuse really. It just just no. Nah. <laughs> um, it got. I think the first half of it went relatively quickly because I had huge quantities of space science stored up probably in these chests here and in all the unlo and in all the unloading stations in all the research areas so each of these probably had well what are they what are they set up to demand they're set up to demand at least 20,000 so there's probably there's probably a good 30,000 and whatever was in these in each each one of these so that's 100 call it 150,000 um, space science stocked up that's 150 of my rocket launch I suppose there's only about a quarter of it but then you oh I don't I don't know Suffice to say, the <coughs> excuse me. Suffice to say, the first half went pretty quickly, and then it just got. It felt like it just got slower and slower. And as you can tell, I'm just sort of filling time while I wait for that last little bit to um, to finish up up there. Uh, maybe I'll speed the video up a little bit and stop talking. But the rocket launches. I mean, they're they're being they're going out fairly quickly. There's 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 a rocket being launched every 30 seconds or so, which is a pretty good rate. Especially when you consider how much stuff goes into an Angel Bob's rocket. But the problem is, even one every 30 seconds isn't enough when you need 800 of them. So it just, yeah, still, it's still quite a long time. But I think we are very, very nearly there. There's like two pixels left of, um, of research to be done on that on that bar. It's a shame you don't get a, a number showing you how many are done, because it would be quite nice to see that ticking down. Okay, so once that finishes, I then need to build this FTL drive, which requires... Which requires low density structures, purple boards, and all of the modules. So let's head over here now. We can't set this building that yet, but we can set this requesting the stuff it's going to need. So I need 500 of them. Need, and then from the modules I need 500 of them. Yeesh. 500 of them. And 500 of them. That's a lot of stuff. Um, also these appear to not be on the logistics network so I'm going to need to um, nip up and sort that one out myself. go here. The question is, do I do I just pick them all up by hand and carry them down, or do I uh, get the, set, put them on the logistics network and get the bots to do it? I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Probably just pick them up by hand. I only need one of these. And I've said a number of times that um, with Factorio, for things where you, you've you got constant construction of things going on, um, I don't like to use logistics bots to carry this product the things around. How many is that? 200. Great. Um, 203. Because it feels like you should. That's the sort of thing that should be automated with either trains or belts. Uh, so I don't. So I'd, I wouldn't have bots bringing the resistors up here, for example. Uh, but for things, things that are sort of one or one off or relatively small numbers of, of whatever it is you're building, then I don't feel so bad about it. I feel it's sort of a bit more justifiable to use um, use the logistics bots to carry the things around rather than go and try and build an entire logistics network to carry. A load of stuff for, for a one-off. Okay, that's way over 200, 500 now. Let's head back down again. So this is definitely a one-off. I, I only need one FTL drive. I hopefully <laughs> never have to do this again. So having the bots carrying all of the modules down there seems perfectly justifiable to me. In fact, that's quite very much what the bots are for I think that and that building and resupplying the player are what you have them for and give it all of those I guess almost 700 but it'll do 
Any moment now. Yeah, so again, you can see the you can see how hard I've been trying to get the ammonia up there as fast as possible. We've got all these pumps. I've, I've, I did the research and built up the systems to get pump three. Pump four was a bit difficult because it required um, carb, tungsten carb. No, not tungsten carbide. I don't know. There's another 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 thing that I never really got round to automating. But I've got pumps in every so often on all of these. Push, so pushing the liquid up here as fast as I reasonably can. And yet it still doesn't seem to be enough. Oh well. There's another rocket. Oh, and another rocket. So yeah, they're they're going up pretty quickly, and it's really nice watching the um, assembly because I've got because of all the productivity modules I've got in. You can see the free parts coming through even faster than the, even faster than the green bar, which shows the one I'm paying for. The yellow bar is the stuff that's extra free because of the uh, productivity modules. Oh, and that one just finished. <laughs> um, that one doesn't have the parts it needs. There we go, we can watch this one for a moment. And so we've got, yeah, then we've got the um, space science pouring out on the belts here, going up into, into a station. Trains coming, picking them all up. The trains are coming in every time it gets to, um, I think it's 2,000 instead of the full 10,000. Uh, in the long run, I don't think it makes any difference, because if you, take, if you wait till 10,000, it just means that you take 10,000 across, and then the... Um, and then the, the labs all work for a bit longer. If you take 2,000, then you get a, sh a shorter burst of work out of them each time a train turns up with stuff. But it happens more often. I think, in the long run, it makes absolutely no difference. The limiting factor is how fast they come out of these machines. But 2,000 seemed like a better number, really. And, of course, they always end up with more than 2,000 in them because uh, they, they, wa they wait for the two minutes or until it stops loading them. So... Yeah, I don't. Again, it, it it just doesn't matter. The uh, it's not it, it's not the bottleneck, so I haven't I haven't bothered to fiddle with it. Come on, we must be nearly there. How many of my labs are actually running at the moment? That one isn't. That one's not. That one's not. Oh, come on. You see, this is the problem. I've got all these labs, but none of them are actually researching. This one, this one is. I've got the uh, the white science flooding in here, so you can see all the fl pretty flickery lights. And if I turn on alt mode, then you can see all the science packs that are in these. In fact, you can't because it's overflow. Hey, that's got the wrong sort of modules in it. No one just taken more rockets than I expected. Um, <laughs> oops. Yeah, so it only shows up to seven different types of modules. It's not showing the space science modules in them. But yeah, never mind. Who cares? You can tell by the pr pretty flickering lights that that one's running. And down here, nope. Wonder where that train went. Did has it gone to either of the, any of the, either of these? No. I don't know where that train's gone. So, so yeah, there's only one pack of labs running on it at the moment, and that means 25 a second, I think. The interesting thing is we can look at the uh, productivity gra production graphs again. And if I search for science, you can see that they're all basically. If I go, let's go out to the one-hour view. You can see that they're all essentially the. Um, the same the same pattern because it's just it's limited by one thing but when when it is running it uses up all of the science packs at the same time um, and we're running at 1.5 thousand per minute whereas in the past when we we're doing the non-science research is back way back here we were running it up to about almost 8 thousand per minute so that's the that's the difference this is why it's taking um, five six times as long as all of the other ones did which is a shame in fact, you can see on yeah, you can see here. This is this is the start where I had all of the science available. So this is the space science pack usage shooting up. It was it ran at six thousand per minute until I ran out and it dropped down. And you can see there's been this sort of general upward trend to about this point as I streamlined production a little bit. And there've been a few times when when I ran out of the um, the heat shield tiles, for example, it's probably here production stopped complete, completely the space science but it carried they carried on building rocket fuel in the background so we've got this nice big spike just afterwards uh, where we made loads of them before it then back, dropped back down to the normal level and probably the same sort of thing here which is why we've had these these little spikes just as other things have run out and that which I've then been able to get back under control properly uh, we can look at the rest of the product, production you can see the things that I've made loads of now then one thing that occurred to me when I was looking at this earlier is the difference between um, Vanilla and Angel Bobs. In in vanilla, you get through so much more copper than you do um, anything else. Certainly than you do iron, because it's used in all of the circuit boards for wiring in massive, massive quantities. That doesn't seem to be quite so much the case in Angel Bobs. I've, got, I've actually got through 50% more iron than I have copper. Um, and 
let's, let's just search for plates. There's a lot of different types of plates. Okay, I can't. Um, but yeah, you can see the two two spikes there. The um, the peak of the copper and the peak of the iron. That was when I was doing the um, the science research as as fast as possible. Uh, when I was producing enormous quantities of the science packs, and then it's dropped off in the in the now into the, the slightly later stage of the space where the space science is a limiting factor, and the consumption, of course, is exactly the same. Um, some of the others, it looks like, yeah, I've been getting through about as much. Yeah, I've actually been getting through more aluminium than um, copper as well. That'll be the um, the low density structures which you get through huge quantities of with the um, all the space stuff. Uh, no, not that one. This one. Um, yeah, so that's been is, is under control. These are all completely full, as you can tell by the fact the uh, the inserters aren't going. Um, Aluminium's running out, but I've got enough of it. That's under control. There'll be a train bringing some more fairly soon. Um, but yeah, this is this. These machines have been working very, very hard, uh, producing all of the um, the low density structures that, that, that we've been ripping through. Because yeah, as, as I said, you need massive, massive quantities of it for. There we go. Research is finished. As I was saying, you need massive quantities of it for all the rocket parts and a lot of the um, space expansion stuff as well. Right. That's finished. Come down here. Don't make those. I want you to make that instead. There we go. It's just pulling all the stuff. That's going to take forever. Let's give that a proper inserter. There we go. Put all the stuff in there. Um. Oh, I was taking the uh, low density structures from underneath. That's fine. Let's stop making rocket. In fact, better idea. Let's stop making rockets all the way along here. So hopefully, oops, don't need any more. We we'll just build this. Here we go. It's being made. Let's speed that. No, <laughs> that's what I meant to do. Speed that up a bit. In fact, let's remove that chest as well because I don't want to accidentally make a. Well, I'm gonna. Make, it's probably gonna make a second one anyway, but never mind. Right. Did that put it in the rock? No, this rocket isn't finished. <laughs> okay, this is silly. Let's take the. Um, let's take that out of there. Stop that. Rocket. Which rocket's the nearest to finished? Forty. Ninety-eight percent. Okay, we'll finish this one off. Uh, I did have some low density structures. Um, that's not what I needed though. Here we go. Rocket is ready. Here it comes. Right. Ready for launch. Put the uh, FTL drive in there. Drum roll. There it goes. Final piece of my um, of my ship. FTL drive's gone. For there we go. It's done. Multiple launches. That's a bit of an understatement. <laughs> ah. Launch another interstellar rocket. Mm. <laughs> Let's not. I think that's probably enough. 300, well, hair under 302 hours. Blimey, that's been a long game. <laughs> and that's been, um, it's over a year of play. How long have I been, when did I release the first video? Let me have a look. Right, episode one, which is fairly high on my um, most viewed videos, was released on July 2019. So it's been about 14 months I've been playing this. And in that time, I've killed 48,000 big spitters. And now my second second most frequently killed item is a tree. <laughs> oh dear. I wonder if that includes trees. That must include trees chopped down, surely. It's not just trees that have been run over or blown up or something. Yeah, that's um, quite a lot. 
Uh, transport belts are embarrassingly high. Oh, walls are up at 3,000. That, that's kills myself, I think, not ones I've lost due to due to enemy action. That's a little bit embarrassing. I need to get... That, that was just down to all of the problems I was having with the uh, plasma turrets, I think. Wow. Well. Thank you for watching. Um, that has been Lawrence Plays, Factorio, Angel Bobs, and Space Expansion. I hope you've enjoyed the stream. Uh, sorry, the um, the series. And you'll come back and join me when I start up a new a new one with um, Space Exploration at some time in the probably not too distant future. Um, if you think there are any other mods I should play with as well, uh, let me know. I'm um, open to suggestions at this point, but I don't want to make it too much harder. I'm hoping and expecting that... Um, that space space exploration, the first part of it at least, is going to be relatively vanilla and I'm going to be able to go through it quite quickly and get to the point of getting ready to launch rockets and then I can move on into the sort of the new different stuff once I've got to that point. Um, but yeah, I think that's going to be an uh, interesting uh, new, new way of looking at it. I think it's probably going to be a bit easier and a bit more relaxed and not quite so much thinking about all the different byproducts and things that, that we have with Angel Bobs. Um, and I think it's yeah, it's going to be interesting. Before I go, let's have a quick look at the um, the final base. I was saved just before I finished the um, <laughs> just before I finished the uh, research. Right, so yeah, it's quite a big base, I'd say. That's um, I think that might be bigger than some of the uh, thousand science a minute or whatever they were bases I built in vanilla. Uh, I have to go back and look at those at some time. So this bit up at the top is, isn't really particularly meaningful, nor this bit over here. But this was the base as it uh, as it as uh, as it was when I finished. Over here, this is where I start, started, just up here. So we've got all of the um, all of the, sort of the initial mines and and power generation in this corner here. Then we have my first main bus that went down here, and you can tell by the wiggles that was before I had um, the ex cliff explosive, so I couldn't couldn't really go in quite the straight line that I wanted to um, and we had all the different smelting areas in this in this grey area here uh, that were gradually as I expanded outwards I replaced them all with stations for unloading and then they just sort of fell into disuse as everything moved away from there and was was done elsewhere We've got the first the, what, for actually the first and main depot for my um, LTN trains down here ideally that maybe maybe that should have been a bit more central I could have moved it over here somewhere so the trains didn't have quite so far to travel but they're pretty quick. I don't think it matters. Then there was my secondary bus that I built over here. This carries the. Um, this is for doing all of the circuit generation. So we've got the the yellow circuits, red circuits, blue circuits, and eventually purple circuits up here. Um, oh, and before that, we had the um, the petrochem area here, where I was turning oil into no gas into plastic through a, a long chain of um, of processes. Then there was my first attempt at building a sort of a massive metal processing facility down here, that where we took took all the uh, the individual ores and sorted them and then smelted them and so on, and that kept clogging up and was generally terrible and gave me so many headaches. Then we moved over here to the second tier where we did the sorting and then. Um, uh, sort of catalyst sorting, and then um, and then refining. So we got the uh, the six different ores being turned into crushed, chunked, and crystalled here, onto all these belts. Then running down here, where I process each one into the different types of plates or the um, or ingots, depending on what I needed, and dump them into the stations over here to be carried away. Um, then we expanded science out from the being on the little little bits off the bus over here to having its own area up here that was fed by trains. Built up all the uh, the research labs as well out out this way. Oh, then we had all the organic nonsense here to build up the um, the crystals for the modules. That was also some more <laughs> more headaches and more frustrations and, and head scratching. Um, and then the little module factory over here that took all the crystals and gems and things when, as they came in. And then my bus uh, no my um, mall area around here that built up everything and just put it onto the logistics network so the uh, the bots could carry it out to me. And sort of sub parts of that, so down here where we're making engines of various types and stone and concrete and batteries and oh and assembly machines, they're they're vital. It's interesting actually that there were sort of a few different types of, of machines. So there's all the, the, the most of the normal ones uh, along here where which were made up from the various tiers of ingredients. So we had the iron iron tier, steel tier, uh, with the different circuits and the different types of bricks, then up to the aluminium tier where we had aluminium plate and aluminium pipes and gears, uh, yeah, pipes and gears, and concrete, and then up to blue blue circuits and titanium, 
And did we ever get past that? No, I don't think we did. We don't, I never really got to a sort of full on night and all stage. But then with some of the other the more complicated machines, we had the ones that required the um, all of the uh, these things, what do you call it? The um, oh, bearings, that's the word I'm looking for, and, and lubricant and, and titanium and nitinol. And these, these were all a bit different. They, they, they got things in a different order, so they didn't fit nicely onto the, um, onto the other bus. So I was producing them here. And inserters and um, inserters and belts, they, they work quite nicely together. And I suspect, in hindsight, I probably could have had all the assembly machines, assembly machine assembly over here as well, because I think they seem to be in a fairly similar order. But I didn't have room, and things just tend to get spaghettied in wherever they'll go. So, yeah, I could I could rebuild all of this and make it a bit neater, but I'm, I'm not going to do that, uh, which won't surprise you at all. Oh, and then the second, second tier of stations up here to unload onto the upper levels of the bus, bringing in the more exotic materials like um, silver and nickel, I think. Um, oh, RTG, um, radioactive thermo, radioactive, radio thermoelectric generators, uh, advanced batteries, whatever this, these are, I've forgotten, um, and so on. Things that were needed further up, like night and all. Ah, so, I've spent a long time <laughs> in this place. 300 hours, as it turns out. And I never even did nuclear power this time. I just went straight for um, solar and expanded that out. And that's possibly a bit unnecessary, because I, I, I could have done nuclear. I've got all of this um, plutonium over here, and the, the uranium coming through here. This seems to have stopped. I'm not quite sure why. Oh no, no, they are actually running. That's all right. They're just, they're just relatively slow. Um, yeah, I could have come in and done and worked out nuclear power, but I, I, yeah, it just never seemed to be necessary. The um, the massive, massive acreage of solar did what I needed. Oh, and then there was the sort of the late stage stuff to get the research speed up, where I put in another science production facility down here and some extra labs. That was okay, and and just expanded the mines out a bit and a bit more ammonia. Yeah, I think that generally. I think now with hindsight, there are a few things I would do differently. I would, um, I'd go, I'd, I'd, I'd push for this system of of of, of um, ore sorting as quickly as I possibly could, along with the catalyst down here, and that would mean pushing for titanium in order to get the um, thermal water. Although actually, no, you don't need so much. I realised later on. With this mud washing system here, you get getting the, um, the geode washing. You can then crush them down into into the two things that you need for um, uh, for the catalysts. Now, I did run into the problem of not having enough crushed stone, so maybe maybe I just have even more of these, or maybe I'd wash it away because I think you can I think you can dissolve it in, uh, in acid, uh, dissolve the uh, crystal dust in acid and wash it away, or maybe just a lot more of these um, warehouses. But that would allow me to then skip over this entire stage which was it's never worked to my satisfaction so I'd, I'd be much happier not doing that at all and just building going straight for this one that would have saved me a lot of time now that I know about plasma cannons as well that would save me a lot of headache with the um, with the combat because I could just get to the point where I was building these out as quickly as possible but otherwise I think things went generally quite well I think I, I don't think I did did too badly at um, at jumping in on a massively complex mod pack. I'm pretty sure there's things I've missed. I got some feedback from Reddit saying I was a noob for uh, keeping my basic levels of iron smelting going on over here for far too long. And I think that might have been part of the reason I was having trouble with biters because that was, I think that was very polluting and so it created a lot of extra well, pollution that caused the biters to, to evolve faster. So I was getting biters that I wasn't really prepared to deal with. But then that was also because I didn't realise I could make plasma cannons and the plasma turrets were amazing. And also I didn't realise that I could make artillery. I thought I thought I had more research I needed to do before I could unlock artillery. So whilst artillery is, is very resource intensive to make the shells, I think if I was doing it again, it would be something I would have prioritised a lot earlier because that would have made clearing out areas much, much easier as well. So... My advice for anyone who wants to do an Angel Bob playthrough. <laughs> Push for catalyst sorting as quickly as you can. Use geode washing in order to get the um, the, the crushed stone and the uh, angel dust. No, not angel dust. That's probably I think that's a drug. Uh, crystal dust as, as fast as you can. Push for, Also push for plasma turrets and artillery as fast as you can for the combat side. And yeah, 
try not to have too much try not to um, pull your hair out too much and if you do decide you want to go for a space expansion as well stockpile the space science so while you're doing all of the all of the earlier research so all of the all of these FTL researches the ones that take ages to do because they're two million each but flow reasonably quickly because they're relatively easy easy science packs that you need at that point keep the rocket launches going keep them going and build up a big stockpile of as much space science as you can you'll you'll want it later and it'll make it and it'll make the final stage a lot a lot quicker otherwise well if you have any more specific questions drop me a message i'll be happy to answer them uh but i think i'm going to call that it for this game thank you for watching I hope you'll come back and join me for space exploration. Uh, it'll, it should go a bit faster for the first few, um, first few episodes because it'll be at the stage where things are, things are happening much more quickly rather than getting into the, the end game where you need to build up massive facilities and so on. It should be interesting. It should be good fun. Hope you'll join me for that, and I'll see you then when I launch a new series. As always, thanks for watching.